Hi, my name is Henrik and I'm the Director for Program Management within the procurement team at IFS R&D. Welcome to this insider video covering procurement category management within IFS Cloud. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can define a category structure to be used in your strategic procurement planning operations. In the procurement area in the application, you will find a section for strategic planning where you can find the procurement category assortment definition. These assortment structures are used to bundle products and services into an hierarchic structure of categories, where products with similar functionality, characteristics or production processes are bundled together into categories. The categories are then used to analyze and understand the spend, define responsibilities and ultimately to set a procurement strategy for the category and for the suppliers delivering within the category. The structure that you can use could either be based on a common taxonomy like NIKES or UNSPSC, where you can import a defined structure with all the levels of categories. But you can also choose to define your own custom defined structure, as in this example where I have separate nodes for direct and indirect material, and you can drill down from a main category to the subcategories and segments. The number of levels you want to use is up to you to decide based on how you want to follow up the spend and on what level you want to set the procurement strategies. When it comes to the responsibility, you can add one or several persons responsible for a category and also specify their roles. If the structure is used across companies, the representatives could either be globally defined or defined per company. So, for steel products, we have a global responsibility where you can see that Anita is the main representative and Pam is responsible for the QA. If we instead look at the IT products category, we have a local responsibility per company where John is responsible in company HS1 and Richard in HSUSD. You can also note that the responsibility is inherited to lower levels in the structure with the possibility to override at any level. The next step would be to define which products or services to include in the category and you can do that using several different dimensions that are applicable dependent on the source of the spend. For the regular purchasing, the most detailed level would be to connect part numbers to the category, but you can also connect groups of parts using purchase groups or supplier assortments as the dimension that decides the category for your purchase. For charges, you can use the charge groups, and for subcontracts, you can use the subcontract types or categories. For all types of procurement, you can always use the financial code parts to decide the category. The most common code part to use to classify the spend would be the account, and as you can see in this example, this setup is done per company, and you can connect several accounts to the same category. Then, how this is applied in, for instance, the spend analysis is that we will try to identify a category using a fixed priority order. For a normal purchase order, we will first check if the part is connected to a category. If not, we will check if the purchase group is connected and then the supplier assortment. And as a last resort, we will always look at the code parts of the financial postings to identify the right category. That is how the procurement category assortment looks in IFS Cloud, and there will be a separate insider video to show you how it's used in the spend analysis. Thank you for watching, and make sure that you subscribe to the IFS YouTube channel.